Graham Parsons is remembered for being one of the pioneers of the country rock music movement of the late 60s and early 70s. He was born Ingram Cecil Connor III on November 5, 1946 in Winter Haven, Florida. His parents were Ingram Cecil Coondog Connor and Avis Connor. The Connors usually lived at their primary residence in Waycross, Georgia, but Avis insisted on returning to her Floridian hometown to give birth. Despite being brought up in a loving household, Graham experienced a great deal of tragedy and trauma in his early life. His mother suffered from depression, and both parents were alcoholics. And perhaps the most tragic event in his early life was when Graham's father took his own life two days before Christmas in 1958. Graham was devastated, but he pressed on. Tragedy struck again in 1964 when Avis's heavy drinking led to her death from cirrhosis. As his family fell apart around him, Graham found solace in his love for music. He was especially emboldened after seeing Elvis Presley perform live in Waycross in 1956. Five years later, while still in his early teens, Graham began playing rock and roll music with cover bands such as The Legends and The Pacers. Soon he was headlining clubs owned by his stepfather, Robert Parsons, in the Winter Haven area. When he was 16, he shifted his musical focus over to folk music and in 1963 formed his first professional band, The Shilohs, in Greenville, South Carolina. Three years later, while attending Harvard, Graham founded the International Submarine Band. They had put out only one album before disbanding. He then joined the Birds in early 1968. He played a crucial role in recording the band's seminal album, Sweetheart of the Rodeo. In 68, Graham and fellow Bird Chris Hillman quit the band and formed an outfit called the Flying Burrito Brothers. In 1969, they put out their debut record, The Gilded Palace of Sin. The album was well received by critics, but failed to perform commercially. Later, he collaborated with Emmylou Harris, who assisted him recording the vocals for his debut solo record, GP, which hit record shelves in 1970. Despite being met with rave reviews, the album failed to chart. Following in his parents' footsteps, Graham's health began to deteriorate due to his years of drug and alcohol abuse. Ultimately, this culminated in him dying at age 23 from a toxic combo of booze and morphine in 1973. Following his passing, Graham's body was shockingly stolen, but that's just the beginning of this wild story, because following the theft of his remains, things got especially weird. Keep watching to hear the bizarre yet true story of what happened to Graham Parsons' corpse following his untimely death at age 26. Ever wish you could earn points on every purchase instead of signing up for so many reward programs? Well, with Fetch, you can. Fetch is a super easy to use free app where you earn free rewards on literally anything you buy. Scan any physical receipt or e-receipt and you will earn points for every purchase. The purchase doesn't need to be on specific brands or items. Scan any purchase. Even if you have receipts that are up to two weeks old, you can scan them and start earning points. After you scan, you can redeem those points for hundreds of rewards, including Amazon, Visa, Starbucks, GameStop, and Walmart gift cards. Fetch is 100% free and so easy to use. Check out the link in the description, download the app now, and use the code FAXVERSE to get 5,000 points when you scan your first receipt. This is a limited time offer for FAXVERSE viewers, so be sure to check it out now. Graham had a deep love for the desert. In the late 60s, Joshua Tree National Monument became a favorite hangout spot for many celebrities and musicians. The monument, which has since been designated a national park, is a few hours' drive from L.A. and famous for its stunning terrain and foliage. Graham Parsons was introduced to the wonders of the Mojave Desert around this time and frequently made his way to Joshua Tree on the weekends. Often he was accompanied by his road manager, Phil Kaufman, and his buddy Keith Richards of the Rolling Stones. Graham loved the high desert and frequently did photo shoots in it. In between shoots and recording sessions, Graham would frequent local bars while staying at the Joshua Tree Inn. Come nightfall, he would visit the National Monument to gaze up at the stars in search of UFOs. While attending a mutual friend's funeral in early 1973, just a few short months before Graham's passing, he and Kaufman had a conversation where they made a pact that if either of them were to die prematurely, they would make sure their bodies were taken out to Joshua Tree. There, they would have one last drink with the body before burning it in the desert. Just a few months after making this pact, Graham checked himself into Room 8 at the Joshua Tree Inn on the evening of September 17, 1973. He intended to spend the next couple of days partying in the room with his friends. 
During his stay, Graham consumed a copious quantity of drugs and alcohol. Kaufman wasn't present as Graham overdosed on a deadly combination of alcohol and morphine. Since Kaufman was both Graham's road manager and close friend, he was immediately summoned to the inn. But by the time he made it there, Graham's body had already been removed and was being stored at a morgue at Yucca Valley Hospital. Kaufman proceeded to gather up all of Graham's belongings, cleaning up any remaining drug-related paraphernalia, before heading back to his home in L.A. After spending the following day drinking and contemplating the pact he'd made with Graham, he knew he had to act promptly to ensure his friend's wishes were upheld. Kaufman also recalled that Graham deeply disliked his stepfather out in Louisiana. He knew if he didn't do something quickly, Graham's body would likely be shipped back to the New Orleans area to be laid to rest. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. A last minute change of plans. The last thing Graham wanted was to have a drawn out, depressing religious funeral service with friends and family. Wanting to uphold his friend's wishes, Kaufman called the morgue only to find out Graham's remains had already been taken to the LA airport where they were expected to be flown to Louisiana. After calling the airline, Kaufman learned the body was expected to arrive that evening. He then recruited several friends who knew about the pact to help him pull off the heist of his lifetime. With a borrowed hearse that was previously used for camping outings, Kaufman and company made their way to the airport. The vehicle had no plates and several broken windows, but it was going to have to do. They first donned suits in an attempt to look more professional, but after deciding they looked ridiculous, they put on their tour clothes, consisting of Levi's, cowboy hats and boots, and jackets embroidered with the words Sin City on the back. Before heading out to the airport, they loaded up the hearse with Jack Daniels and beer. Graham would likely have found that pretty hilarious. Hours later, Kaufman and his friend Michael Martin arrived at the airport loading dock just as a truck arrived with Parsons' casket. Despite being drunk and bedraggled, Kaufman somehow managed to convince an airline employee that Parsons' family had changed their mind and wanted to ship the body on a privately chartered flight instead. While Kaufman was busy filling out paperwork inside using a fictitious name, a law enforcement officer pulled up, blocking the hangar's door. Thinking they were about to get caught, Kaufman got nervous, but the officer suspected nothing and sat there. After getting handed the paperwork, he walked up to the cop and asked him to move the car. The officer then apologized and literally helped load Graham's casket into the back of the liquor-filled, unlicensed hearse. Martin got into the driver's seat and tried to drive out of the hangar, but on his way out, he ran into the wall. The police officer observed the accident and made a comment about not wanting to be in Martin's shoes right now before driving off. Kaufman and Martin honored Graham's wishes. After several close calls, the two drunk corpse nabbers sped out of the airport. On their way out of town, they stopped at a gas station to fuel up before heading to Joshua Tree. Once they made it there, they drove until they were too drunk to go any further. Then they stopped at Cap Rock, a landmark geological formation at the park, where they unloaded Graham's coffin. That's when Kaufman saw flashing lights in the distance. Concluding it must be the police, he quickly opened the casket and doused Graham's body with gasoline before tossing a match in the casket. The two men watched as a giant fireball erupted out of the casket. With the inferno blaze, the ashes of Graham's burning body rose high into the desert sky. As the car lights in the distance got closer, Kaufman and Martin drove off and beelined to Los Angeles. After making it safely home, they laid low for a while. The following morning, all the newspapers told the tale of Graham's hijacked and burnt body. Some reports even speculated that the cremation may have been some kind of satanic ritual. Knowing that the police were looking for them, Kaufman and Martin turned themselves in several weeks later. Incidentally, they wound up in court on Parsons' 27th birthday, November 5, 1973. Since there was no law at the time against stealing a corpse, the two were charged with misdemeanor theft for stealing and destroying the coffin. They were essentially given a slap on the wrist. They were ordered to pay $708 in damages and an additional $300 apiece for their crime. Now it's time to hear from you. What was the most surprising part of the story to you? Let us know in the comment section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.